Everything must be symmetrical. Has, wait. Mm, mm, mm. Ah, that's satisfying. Let's go. G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and today I'm going to show you a little trick you can use if you sketch with a blue or red pencil to turn your sketches into refined concept art pieces digitally in post-production and it's going to really speed up that process and take them from that sketch to that refined art piece very quickly. Now this little lesson slash tip or trick is going to take place in two parts. The first part is traditional where we sketch on paper. Sometimes we sketch something we're so happy with or we need to see taken that step further. So the second part of this video today is going to explain how you can do that in a really simple and fun way. This little double-sided red and blue pencil is one I quite like because I used to carry a red and blue pencil with me all the time to sketch with because I enjoy doing my construction sketches in colour and this is saving space because it's hitting two birds with one stone so to speak. But a question a lot of people have is why do people sketch in blue or red pencil? There are a lot of reasons why. There's actually a video that my friend Bailey J did on her channel explaining a few of the reasons. I definitely recommend checking that out if you want to dive into the depths of that, which we won't go into in this video. But suffice it to say that it's easier to isolate colours, it's sometimes more aesthetically pleasing, and in a more traditional sense that non-photo blue pencil could be isolated and removed. So in a similar way, I'm going to create a sketch today starting off with my blue pencil and then I'm going to isolate and remove that blue in digital post-production and show you how you can also add colour and make a refined concept piece really easily and you can actually only reap this benefit if you sketch with that blue or red colour. I'm sure you can do it if you sketch with other coloured pencils but it's easiest with these and they're the most accessible sort of construction pencil colours that people use and can, you get the point. I start off with really light blocky shapes but one thing you'll notice through the course of creating this image is I'm really not being shy in fixing or making changes. I have no problems with changing positions of my hands or arms because I'm going to be getting rid of the construction lines later anyway. It's more important to stay relaxed and loose and get the pose and positioning that I'm really happy with. Once I'm happy with the sketch's aesthetic, I'm ready to move on to line work. I start off by going around the entire piece with a 0.2 fine liner, just solidifying all of the shapes and structures that I've created, making sure to keep everything really nice, clean and clear. This is our final line work. So make sure to be as clean as you possibly can with the execution of your lines. After that, I uh, often like to go around the edges and silhouette of my characters with a brush pen or a thicker marker or fine liner. This can really help add some style and edge to your character character images. So now I have my finished character concept sketch here. I've got the line work done, but as you can see, that blue sketch look is a bit messy. It looks kind of cool, to be honest. I really like that aesthetic of the raw construction lines sort of faintly under the refined finished line work. But as far as producing perhaps a colored concept piece from this, aside from maybe drawing over it again in a light box or reproducing it digitally, it can be a little bit complicated. So I'm gonna remove all those complications for you and show you some post-production Photoshop magic to take it from this stage into a really refined concept piece stage. So the next step is to take this artwork and scan it onto the computer so you have a digital image to work with. You can of course get good lighting and use your smartphone to take a picture or a camera. The point is you want to take this traditional image, make it digital and open it up in Photoshop. I'm going to do that for you right now with the magical powers of editing. You ready? One, two, three! Ah! There you go, magic. Now we are in Photoshop. This is a raw scan. So I haven't done anything to this scan yet. There are imperfections and the contrast and the things are a bit off, but that's okay. So the first thing we're gonna do is duplicate this layer, right click and duplicate layer. Just as simple as that, it doesn't matter what it's named, who cares? And with this duplicated layer, we're gonna apply a couple of little things, just a couple of little, little steps that uh, when applied is gonna get rid of our construction sketch and actually, then allow us to paint underneath it and it's going to be like this really refined thing. I'm talking too much, let's do it. Step one, go image adjustments and you're going to go down here to channel mixer. 
When you select this, you get this funky little thing that does weird things if you move things around and you, 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 that's weird, don't do that. But if you select presets, you can go down to black and white with blue filter, which means it's gonna turn the whole image to grayscale, but sort of take out the blue. So if I click that, <gasps> Whoa. Now do keep in mind that if you sketch with red pencil, you can actually do the same with red filter, orange filter, green filter, so on and so forth. So you can actually apply this to different colors. Red and blue are the most common as far as construction sketching goes, but as you can see, you can do that with green or orange. Anyways, I'm gonna hit okay to apply that and I've applied this filter, but you can still see that if I zoom in here, we have this grainy sort of look happening with this lighter sketch area. I mean, don't get me wrong, it actually looks pretty cool already, but the next step is really gonna make that jump. So now let's go back up here again to image adjustments and we're going to select levels, levels. Now this is a little Photoshop window that I didn't have an appreciation for in the past, but now I do. Uh, I use this quite often and it's so great for refining and bringing out some contrast. As you can see, we have this little sort of graph silhouette uh, and that's a visual indication as to how much light and dark balance there is. And if I grab this little slider on the right and bring it across, it's actually intensifying the white uh, to overlay some of the dark areas. And I can pull this all the way up and you can see that that goes all the way up until all of the dark is gone. And you can do the same in the reverse where you bring the slider on the left down and in and that really brings everything darker all the way up until obviously it's sort of stupid. So you're actually gonna use this to find the Goldilocks so that you can keep the refined solid line work that you've drawn and get rid of the sketches completely. So I'm gonna take this slider on the right and move it across and you can use that graph silhouette as a bit of a clue uh, to where you wanna take it. I'm not going to try and perfect it just with that one slider. I'm just gonna find a nice little sweet spot. There's still some changes that need to be made, still some sketchy lines that appear, but that's okay. Cause now I'm gonna to go to the other slider, bring that in a little bit. And as you can see, those solid lines that I've drawn have just really intensified. I, I don't wanna to go too much further than that. I'll sort of keep it there. And now we can finalize and finish this uh, process by finding that Goldilocks sweet spot by moving the white and middle slider. The middle essentially adjusts that threshold between them. Really, this is an experimental process. I like to just play around until I find a really nice uh, balance between keeping those solid lines that I've drawn and getting rid of the sketchy lines underneath. And I feel like that there is a really nice balance. So I'm gonna hit okay. Ta-da, as you can see, this looks pretty cool, right? It looks like a pretty solid, nicely drawn line work image with no sketch. And I'm actually gonna hide that and you can see the difference that that makes. We've completely gotten rid of our construction sketches and now, if you want, you can take it that step further and paint. Now I know what you're thinking. The painting process is so meticulous. You have to select the areas and then paint inside the areas. Not true. It's much easier than that. Calm down, Jazza. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm just so excited. I'm like an infomercial. But wait, there's more. I'm gonna create a layer between these two layers just of a blank white and paint that there so that I just have a solid blank white layer uh, dividing them or just directly underneath my now altered image. And between that blank white layer and uh, the, the line work, I'm gonna create another layer which I'm gonna do some painting on. And now going back up to our topmost layer, our character line work, I'm gonna select this drop down uh, little layer styles area here in the layers panel and I'm gonna select multiply. Now going back to my painting layer, just that layer between the blank white and the line work, I can select any color. Let's pick, I don't know, a random bright red. And with a brush, all of a sudden, anything I paint is gonna be underneath that line work, but clearly visible. Now, if you wanna take it a step further and make the painting process even easier so that anything outside of the lines of that character isn't visible, just go back to that topmost layer and using the magic wand tool, select the outside and it'll select all of this silhouette, or at least, you know, for the most part, it'll select the silhouette. Create a new layer directly on top of the painting layer that you have, but underneath your line work layer still, and fill it with a random color. You want it to be something that you can see visibly just to make sure that you can see the, the silhouette that you've got going on. So for example, in the foot here, so I'm actually just gonna go in and manually erase where it didn't effectively create that silhouette I wanna use. And then zooming back out, 
I think that does it. It does, perfect. Now our image is ready for painting. So I'm gonna bring this layer back that I have the painting on. You can see that it's nicely within our character's line work area there. I'm gonna delete that. Another thing to remember is if you wanna change the color of that silhouette surrounding that we have, you can just double click on the layer and uh, select color overlay and just simply in here, change it perhaps back to the white or to a black or whatever your heart desires. In fact, if you're really fancy, and you want to get crazy, you can paste in an image like an explosion, BOOM! And you can alt click between that image that you've just pasted and uh, that silhouette layer you've created and that will create a clipping mask anchoring that image into and inside the silhouette surrounding that you've made. It's a little bit busy so I'm just going to select filter, blur, Gaussian blur and I'll just uh, add a little bit of, a little bit of blur just so it's not too too visually demanding. Now I know I've gone all over the place here. I'm just having a lot of fun with this. As you can see, it's just so so easy and so much fun to turn your, your line work and your sketch into something so much more finished looking. Anyways, now I'm gonna go back into my painting layer and I'm going to fill it in with color. And just like that, I finished throwing color into my character concept piece. And let me just remind you where we started. This is the original concept sketch with line work. You ready? Bit different, isn't it? So imagine the difference between presenting a client piece or a project submission or whatever, where you're either submitting something like this or something like this. I may have gotten a little bit over the top and slightly confusing by adding in the, the mask and the colors and things like that. But the, the main point that I was trying to make is in removing that blue sketch where you go essentially images, adjustment, and down to channel mixer. And you wanna select black and white with the color you used as the sketch construction filter and hit okay. And then that mostly gets rid of that. And then you wanna make your final adjustments into image adjustments and levels. And that's where you make your final uh, level balance adjustments to your line work until you have a really crisp line work base to work with. Again, as I mentioned, you can add color underneath that by creating a layer uh, underneath that line work layer with the line work layer set to multiply and then coloring on that layer underneath. And of course, as I mentioned, you can create a clipping mask or a silhouette surrounding it so you don't have to worry about coloring over the edges. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Jazza, why does the army man from the 20th century have medieval daggers? And to that I say, shut up! I can only draw one kind of dagger and I don't know what army daggers look like when they're modern. <laughs> This is, I just gave you this epic tutorial on how to make, like, how to turn this into this. And all you can ask is why I'm drawing medieval daggers. Well, shows what this sort of thankless job receives for the work I, and the things I give you. My illustration insecurities aside, thank you so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. If you haven't, subscribed today and like it if you enjoyed the tutorial and I was helpful to you. That was a blast. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, I'll see you later. I don't know what army daggers look like when they're modern and... <laughs> Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for new content every week. If you want to support my work and get some goodies for yourself, head over to my store for archives, ebooks, digital brushes, video courses, and more. If you enjoyed this video, here's a link to another video you might like from this channel. And if you want even more, make sure to check out all my behind the scenes action on my vlog channel, Daily Jazza. Draw with Jazza is proudly sponsored by Adobe. Join the creative cloud today and get loads of incredible creative tools like Photoshop, Animate, Premiere Pro, and other apps for your computer or mobile device. That's it for now. Thanks for joining the arty party and until next time, I'll see you later.